Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is a pick a card reading all about 2022, but this has a very specific theme. It is about the eclipses on the Scorpio and Taurus axis. I will put the dates for those eclipses down in the description box. And you know, if you watch my channel, you know that I don't typically do readings that focus on kind of specific time-centered events, but I really felt inspired to do that for, for these eclipses and for kind of 2022 in general, because I feel like in this particular case, a little bit of cognitive awareness is going to help us tune into the higher frequencies of these particular shifts. So there's five different piles, one to five, and each of these are, you know, going to have their own specific message for how these eclipses are going to affect you throughout the year. Um, but I have a couple of things I wanted to say about, about the eclipses just in general first, because I am recording this a few days after the Taurus full moon eclipse in 2021. Um, I'm actually recording this right in the very last hours of Scorpio season, so that's why I wanted to, like, get this recorded now, but this is of course good all through 2022 and even beyond, um, especially if you're having, if you found your way to this video and something's going on on the Scorpio Taurus axis, then this reading has something in it for you. So how do I explain? So this recent eclipse, the Taurus full moon eclipse in 2021 was really impactful for me. I felt it so strongly and two main things I think I want to zero in on for everybody, right? Um, the Taurus Scorpio axis itself is essentially the axis of life and death. And there might be some tension there, but when it is fully integrated, fully unified, it is just the, the earth cycle itself, the pure, beautiful cycle of life, death, life, death. And There's something going on where these eclipses, beginning with the one in 2021 and then repeated four times in 2022 as we move through this energy, we will be guided through a series of initiations where we will become more comfortable uh, on the earth plane, feeling safe in the earth plane, feeling safe and understanding of the life death cycle knowing that death is truly just a rebirthing process truly 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 and of course you guys are all walking your spiritual path and you all think about these kind of things so you already have an understanding of this you know in your mind in on a mental level but there it there there is so much more to be explored here to really understand this on a physical level in a way that you maybe have never experienced maybe since you came to earth or maybe not since one of your um like ancient earth lives where you lived completely completely at one with the earth like living in the forest right um as your ancestors lived completely completely in tune with the earth cycle that is what we are on one level, tuning back into that, that feeling of oneness with the earth, but also moving beyond it. Um, so of course, when we're facing lessons of the life death cycle, all of us, all of us are going to have to somehow face whatever fears surrounding death that we have that will need to be faced. And that's why this year 2022 and why these eclipses on the Taurus Scorpio or the life death axis are going to be very like very emotional, very primordial, but at the end, so liberating and will essentially change your entire experience of being in your body and being on earth. And so, and with this comes the, I don't know, so, something that I experienced personally in the days after this full moon eclipse in Taurus in 2021. Um, I guess I'll say full disclosure on this one, guys, um, just because I, I want to be clear about where I'm coming from. Um, this is something I experienced after, how shall I put it, after I had mushrooms for dinner, if you know what I mean, right? Um, and what the mushrooms showed me was that the earth plane 
this is like Taurus energy itself, right? Taurus energy, Earth energy itself um, is this perfectly interconnected, ever flowing, ever breathing geometric structure of all creation. And it has been the same for unspeakable eons. This, this, is, this goes beyond just Earth. This is like the whole 3D universe, all of the Earth energy on all the different planets, all on our entire universe, right? It has been the same forever. Just think about Taurus energy, how Taurus energy doesn't, it doesn't like to change, right? It is a fixed sign. It is Taurus. It is the same forever. It continues on. And the thing it fears the most is actually its counterpart, Scorpio energy, right? It fears death when when it is death, like transformation, right? Um, that is being imposed on it from the outside. It understands the internal life death process where death is this just constant inner rebirthing thing, right? Like just like a plant growing and thriving and dying, returning to the soil. It understands that type of death process, but what it doesn't, it doesn't like, it feels completely threatened by is a transformative process that comes in from the outside. And so there is this tension going on between what I'll just call earth plane energy or 3D energy. So like earth energy, right? We have earth energy on the one, one hand being here for all, for like eons and eons and eons of existence. And then we have non-physical consciousness in the other side, right? And they have been dancing and meeting and dancing and forming a relationship, forming a relationship exactly like, like lovers or like soulmates, right? They've been, that's what we've been doing as spiritual consciousnesses in physical bodies. We have been part of this mating or this just relationship building between earth energy and spirit energy, you could say. And this has been challenging and threatening to both partners in this relationship for just eons and eons of time. But that is starting like this year, like over the next year and, and moving forward. It, it's like, that's when this is changing. Um, the, we're coming into union between earth and spirit energy are coming into union. And that means that both sides have changed, right? Both sides have changed as they come into oneness, as they come into unity. Earth energy itself is changing. The earth is changing, um, like expanding, growing, leveling up, moving up in dimensions, right? And spirit energy is changing. Consciousness itself is changing to become um, safe and embodied in the physical form. They, they are, have learned from each other and they are both changed because of it. They are becoming one. So that is the other aspect that I think is the other thing that we're working through with these Taurus Scorpio eclipses. <laughs> um, yes. So now we will see how this is going to be like, you know, influencing you personally. And you might find that you like to come back to this reading as the year, as 2022 comes on and, you know, pick a different card here because you might you know, work through one energy and then work through another energy at a different part of the year. So go ahead and pick your card. It's number one to five, and I will see you in your reading. Hey, card number one, welcome to your reading. Got your stack right here. Let's see what we got. I might draw more cards depending on how I feel about this. Okay, Eight of Swords. Freeing yourself from limitations. Earth pulsing, pulse of the mother. Slow down, time in nature. Grand Water Trine Blessings. And the Soul Star, or sorry, the Earth Star Chakra, the Earth Star Chakra, but understanding that the Earth Star Chakra is the counterpart to your Soul Star Chakra, right? The Earth Star Chakra is every bit as necessary to your spiritual, to your spirituality as your Soul Star Chakra, right? Mother Earth. Mother Earth.
<laughs> okay, the the earth and water energy here. Earth and water. I mean, this eight of swords is air energy telling you what are you moving out of the limitations of the mind. The limitations of the mind. The eight of swords is always having to face the limiting thought structures that you have imposed on yourself and that have been holding you back. Um, how has your mind and your thoughts, even the thoughts of others, how have these thoughts kept you from merging with your body and kept you from merging with the earth? That right there is the main thing for you to think about. What thoughts are holding you back? What thoughts are preventing you from, like, this This is such a forest vibe for me. Um, like, I can see you guys, like, walking out into the forest, but maybe you have never truly walked out alone into the forest before because maybe, I mean, maybe you don't live near the forest and maybe you feel like you can't get to it or maybe you feel like it's too dangerous to go out into the forest by yourself. Um, I, I almost feel like, uh, you know, not everybody, obviously, but somebody watching this is afraid of the forest, afraid of the forest. Um, so for that person or a couple of people feel into why, why, what, what is the root of that fear? Why are you afraid of the forest? Being afraid of the forest is like being afraid of life. And that's almost what, what this feels like. Uh, so this is a way more focus on the Taurus aspect of these Taurus Scorpio eclipses. This is Taurus energy because this is all, all of the, the earth energy. I mean, we do also have this grand water trine, which is like a Scorpio thing. but So it's both there, but this feels like not so much afraid of death because I think you have your kind of inner emotional experience. You guys are stronger, uh, at least in this moment, right? You're feeling more comfortable with the emotional experience, with your inner inner emotional experience. That's where your strengths are, right? The grand water trine. Comfortable with your inner emotional experience on some way. This is, you're so empathic. You're so sensitive. Um, really, really heightened psychic ability, right? It will way more than you know. So, But something, it's, it, it's, this, I've been thinking about this for myself, so don't feel like I'm singling you guys out or anything on this, but, you know, we all kind of understand that humans have a fear of death, right? But I think what we often overlook is that all of us, almost all of us, right, we also have a fear of life. We have a fear of life, and that's kind of what this is kind of boiling down to, right? Um perhaps a fear of taking risks, perhaps a fear of things being chaotic or things getting out of control or things being overwhelming. Grand Water Trine, you guys could be easily, easily overwhelmed with others, not because you don't have resilience, resiliency and not because you don't have inner strength because you have both of those, those things. It's because you sense things so, <laughs> so strongly. You sense everything so strongly. Some of you could be like heat and cold sensitive even, like you know, uh, like if touching a hot plate that other people could hold, you might touch it and it might be like overwhelmingly hot to you, like painfully hot, um, you know, or however it plays out for you. This is like emotional sensitivity. And maybe you have, sometimes you guys have felt that your emotional sensitivity has been almost like a curse or a plague and that it has, you have often kind of kept your life small or isolated so that you could deal with your oversensitivity, deal with your hypersensitivity because the world is so much, right? The world is so much to you, so much to you. And it's perfect. It's perfect that you have done your self-care and that you have created safe spaces for yourself. That is perfect. Always do that when you need it. Always do it. Never, never, never feel <laughs> feel bad for pulling your energy out of the world and for going into your hermit cave that is necessary and beautiful and aligned for you and and perfect right um but over these eclipses over 2022 or you know whenever you're watching this you're going to be challenged to come out of the hermit cave and to experience life 
to really truly experience life um, on a on a on a more like to do something you've never done before, to do something you've never done before, to do something you might have considered taboo even, or to do something you maybe you considered it just something you would never do because it is too scary or because it is too overwhelming, right? Some of you, this could be, you know, going out into crowds or having deep interpersonal relationships with others. For others of you, this could be doing something like whitewater rafting or going out trekking um, alone in the wilderness or with a small group of people out in the wilderness or traveling to a new country, doing something you've never been done before. Um, and there's, there's truly no nothing holding you back here. But you, the, the limitations of your mind, Eight of Swords, anything that you think is holding you back is a limitation you've placed there. And so purging those, those limitations of the Eight of Swords can be incredibly emotional, okay? Incredibly emotional. Like if you guys, if one of these full moons and new moons come around in Scorpio and Taurus season and you just find yourself completely flooded with emotions... Um, any, any emotion, whatever it is, know that, that that's something that's coming up and purging. It's purging out of you. It is being released, being released. And after it is released, that is setting you up to be clear, to be clear in order to receive something with nature, in order to receive something with life, in order to truly connect with life, connecting with your body, connecting with others, connecting with the earth, this earth pulsing card. A massive invitation to get out um, into nature in whatever way that you can. Lay down in the grass, you know, walk with your feet in the water. Connect with Mother Gaia, right? Just getting so connected and remembering that you are part of life. You are not apart from life, right? You are part of life. You are... <sighs> so held, so held, so protected, so safe in your physical body, so safe in your physical body. Um, the root kind of cause or issue here is that there's a lack of trust in life itself, like a lack of trust in the life cycle, the, the life cycle of earth, the life cycle of 3D reality does not feel safe to you. You do not feel safe here. And that is what you're being initiated through so that you can, you can become, you can remember that you are safer. You can remember that everything is just part of this beautiful flow of seasons, right? flow of seasons. Get in tune with the animals. Ask Mother Gaia, right? Ask Mother Earth if there is any plant medicine that might, that is aligned for you, right? That has something to show you. And this could be anything from like a supplement um, or to like a vegetable, like a fruit that you want to eat or, you know, something more powerful and, and psychoactive. Just you need to find out what is aligned and what is being, what are you being guided towards to have an experience with? So what, what is it that will teach you how to feel safe on earth. There is something you, you need to experience about earth life. There's something more for you guys to experience about what it means to be alive on earth because you have been holding yourselves apart from the life cycle. And, you know, Mother Gaia is here. She is right with you in every breath. You, you are her. You can channel her if you will you can speak to her you can become her you are one with her you your body is her body your feelings are her feelings you are one right <sighs> so yeah this is a root chakra card inviting you to travel down into the center of the earth and communicate with Gaia and know that <laughs> you are literally geometrically connected you are one you are one um I want to get some additional messages. I feel like you guys, you know, there's an invitation here, which you can take or leave <laughs> as feels right to you. But to, 
You can speed this process along and make it easier on yourself if you deliberately choose to participate in life in a way that you haven't yet. So if you, if you, if you do this, because if you continue to resist, um, that just kind of drags this process out and then you will need to learn these lessons through life forcing it on you. And you can do that if that's how you want to do it. It will go easier on you if you, you start taking steps. I mean, some of you might want to take, go do something completely radical and like jump in head first and do something like, um, they, like, you know, like whitewater rafting is the example that keeps coming to mind, like going and doing something com um, completely different or completely out of your comfort zone. Some of you want to jump right in and do that, and knock yourselves out, right? <laughs> um, not literally, hopefully, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, but some of you, it could be something very small. Like I, I could easily imagine somebody getting this reading who is like, you know, agoraphobic, like doesn't, um, is afraid of leaving their house, right? For you, maybe it's going to get the mail or going to the grocery store. So you can take these steps and what I, whatever it is, it's taking some kind of risk, take, getting involved in life in some way. Um, and if you're like squeamish about like dirt and mess and stuff, it's like put your, your feet in the mud, right? Walk in the mud, walk in the dirt, go, go hang out with the earthworms, right? Um, if you start taking these steps, then that will, you, you will, be showing the earth that you are participating in life and that you were learning about life and that you are part of the life cycle. And then these lessons and initiations will, you'll be able to move through them more easily. So you're definitely invited to take steps as they can be as small or as large as you want them to be. It is the, the size of the step is not important. It, it's only the intention and the intention to become involved in life in a new way, in a new way. You are your greatest gifts, gift. Your life's journey is your masterpiece. Live your life like it is your greatest piece of art. Your life is art, right? You might feel like nobody is interested in your life story, but somebody is. Some people are, right? The universe is. Your entire cosmic entourage is interested in your life's journey, is interested in your life's story. So live your life as it is an art. Craft your life into whatever you want it to be. Craft your life. Imagine that you, you know, maybe you'll never actually write your autobiography, but imagine that you are. Imagine that you will write your autobiography. What kind of character arcs do you want yourself to go on, to go on? What kind of memories do you want to be able to write about? Think about your life in retrospect. Like it doesn't matter how old you are, but imagine you are much older. <laughs> and then look, imagine that you're looking back on your life. What do you want to fill your life up with? And then go for it, go for it because the earth is here to support you in your life's journey. You are your greatest gift. Your life's journey is your masterpiece. So you guys are basically <laughs> called to let go, let go of the fears and limiting beliefs that prevent you from truly feeling alive, truly feeling alive. So next time you want to take a step on this journey, ask yourself, what could I do that would make me truly feel alive? What is a life experience I want to have? And then go out and claim it. So that's your reading card number one. I love you guys. Bye. Hey, card number two, welcome to your reading. Um, I might draw some additional cards. We'll see how I feel after I do these. So first you've got the magician, <laughs> nice. Taurus, I have, that's really cool because what is this about? The Taurus Scorpio axis <laughs> eclipses. Soul star chakra number 32 with meditation and lifting the veil. You guys, this is a new, probably for you, a new type of spiritual journey. This is an, an earthed, an earthed spiritual journey. <sighs> um, before I continue, I want to grab a different deck and like just draw a couple of extra cards. Yep. 
yeah, from the Psychedelic Space Tarot, of all things. Um, I feel like you, this group, your spiritual journey, at least for the, you know, maybe for your whole journey, <laughs> at least for the recent past, has been primarily, like, really cosmic, really out there, really going up into, you know, starseed stuff, stuff about aliens, you know, your galactic journey, um, your, and even, like, your way, way non-physical journey, like, you guys have been really out there, and through these eclipses, you're going to be kind of pulled back down to Earth, and that, that might seem strange to you guys at first. <laughs> yeah, okay, so Seven of Wands, which is a little bit of, like, conflict energy, like rising above a conflict, rising above a conflict. Page of Cups, a newfound sense of love for something you haven't loved before. Learning to love something you never thought you could love. This could be like falling in love with somebody who you never thought was your type, or it could be like learning to love a type of art or a type of earth experience that you just you had to pick completely off of your radar. You're learning to love something new. <laughs> Page of Cups and Knight of Cups. Love is in the air on <laughs> some level for you guys, damn. Um, but it, it's something is strange about it for you. The chariot, but you're going to charge ahead with it anyway. Okay. <laughs> Um, yada, da, da, da. This is like a complete shift in your perspective in a way that you didn't expect. It, it, it's like, because you guys have been very abstract, very cosmic. Um, and then there's this sudden feeling of like getting grounded, of coming back down to earth in a way that you did not expect. And there's just something I want to address here for, uh, so, like, so, for some of you, this might feel very smooth and, and beautiful and all that. But for some of you, it's like you might almost have like a crisis of faith almost. Um, or you might wonder, cause you might feel this disconnect between the higher realms. Um, you might feel like, like your guides aren't talking to you or you're just not having the kind of cosmic or non-physical spiritual experiences that you are used to having. It's like there, there's, there's this strange shift and suddenly it's like the physical world is rushing in and, it, that might make some of you question things going, was I just dreaming this whole time? Like, was all of that made up? Why did it go away? So super important message here, guys. You have not like fallen off the wagon. There is nothing wrong with you or your journey. Um, you, you, you are even more deeply connected than ever. Nothing has been lost. Nothing has gone wrong. Um, you know, your soul family has not abandoned you. Your, your, your star family has not abandoned you. You're, you have not lost your connection. Okay, like you got this soul star card here. Um, it's just that you are in a cycle right now where all of your journeying is coming down into the earth plane, into this Taurus energy. And it's just, if you're super used to being really abstract, really out of your body, it, it just might make you question things. I really think for at least a couple people, you could be having a few days of like a crisis of faith type of thing. Um, and I mean, that's totally fine. Like, you don't even need to fight the crisis of faith. You could totally just roll with it if you want. It's like, it's fine. Because, it, it, like, I mean, maybe a few of you are religious and or have been religious. And maybe for a few of you, this is like a religious crisis of faith. In which case, for you guys, you might find that you take what was most beneficial for you, what, most, what was most beautiful to you from your religion, and then you just kind of evolve into a more loosely, more personally based spiritual experience. Um, but most of you were probably already just kind of, you know, your own esoteric ninja type of spiritual person. And um, I could see you guys just suddenly for like a month or a year or even two years having this really grounded experience. And just know that that is part of your journey. That is part of the cycle. And it is so, so important. It is so important. And this is the time for you to like receive and, and manifest and manifest. You got the magician here. 
okay? This is your time to be the mu the musician, <laughs> be the magician. Maybe some of you are my musicians. Time for you to be the magician. And in order to be the magician, you need to be grounded in your body, grounded in your body. And there's, it's like you're waking up out of a dream a little bit, looking around and seeing the world around you with new eyes. And, and this is because you have grounded your like cosmic consciousness into your body you're like new level of grounded new level of grounded and that is literally what you came to do all along and if it feels like your higher spiritual experiences like your non-physical spirituality is like receding from you a little bit it, you're just having that sensation that's just your experience right now i mean maybe there your guides are taking a little bit of a step back but it's not like they're, they're still just as with you. They're, they're still there. They never, they never leave you. They never leave you, right? You're, you're, it, it's just that they're not, they might not be like sending you the same types of signs or communication that they used to because they want you focusing on your physical world, on the physical world. And this lifting the veil, it's like it's lifting the veil between you and the physical world. Something about the physical world that you weren't seeing before. This is time to have such beautifully grounded spiritual experiences and to uncover like the diamond in the rough, to uncover the hidden gems that were in your world right there around the corner, right under your nose the whole time, the whole time. And this soul star card is very interesting to me because here you are meditating with this like flame of fire around you, this flame, this fiery flame around you. The imagery on this card just it, it really feels to me like here you are this like spiritual form descended all the way down to earth and it's like you finally landed you finally got all the way to sitting on the ground to sitting on the ground and that's what you came to do you finally got to the bottom of the ladder but this isn't like a hitting rock bottom type of thing this is like a success of having grounded you guys finally got grounded and now you're unlocking all of these beautiful grounded experiences but your spiritual flame is still blazing around you up into the sky and it is blazing around you in a way that people the people you encounter in your daily life can see well maybe they probably can't see it but they can feel it <laughs> they feel it and please remember that as you walk around in your life um like maybe you, you're if you were more used to doing kind of obvious acts of spiritual service um through any kind of energy work or grid, grid working or just whatever it is that you do that might shift for you and you might find that you're almost like taking a break, taking a time out to rejuvenate, to rejuvenate you, to really ground into the human experience, to rejuvenate and ground so that you will be refreshed for later. And definitely, definitely this feeling of, if you feel separated from your higher experience, that's not forever, right? You're having this cycle of groundedness and you eventually cycle on up back into a new integrated experience, right? If you've been up here and now you're down here in the earth realm, both of these are just different experiences to have. And then when you cycle back out of it, then it'll be more integrated, it'll be more integrated. So don't feel that this is forever. You will definitely move on to a new zone of experience later. But for now, this is like so grounded and you will be manifesting, like receiving, receiving in your physical life, right? Receiving love, page of cups and knight of cups, receiving and like giving, receiving and giving love, the flow of love moving around you. And you're going to feel so supported, so supported. I mean, there might be a feeling of frustration or antagonism for a little bit with the seven of wands. Um, you might feel this kind of energy, this kind of like having to fight, <laughs> having to defend yourself or something a little bit around one of these eclipses or around some kind of, you know, full moon or new moon or some kind of intense energy moment. But this feeling is going to be very fleeting. It's not going to last. So if you came to this reading um, and you're like, this is way too positive, I'm not really feeling this, right? If you're feeling in this seven of wands, if you're feeling like you're having to fight six other people right now, or like a whole cosmic host of forces, that's just a temporary thing. That's the energy that you're purging. Don't like, don't worry about that. That's not the vibe you're staying in forever because you're going to rapidly, rapidly blast on from that, the chariot. I don't know why my camera just did that, but 
okay. <laughs> um, the chariot, right? Blasting forth, blasting forth, especially because this chariot is in this spaceship. So <laughs> it's, you know, your star family has still got your back. They're still watching you. They're still with you, but, and they're aligning you with gifts. So I don't think I mentioned it in my blurb at the beginning, but another thing I've been feeling about this 2022 eclipse cycle is that some people are going to be doing like a ton of fear facing and purging and some people if they have already done most of that fear facing and purging beforehand they're going to be set up for a little fear facing and purging but also like a massive amount of receiving and that's you guys you're going to be receiving something this year receiving something Receiving something that makes you feel surrounded with love. First, notice the feeling of being so taken care of. Notice the feeling of being taken care of. And then in your environment, notice how the, how the earth is taking care of you in every moment and how it doesn't always look like what you expect, but it's always exactly what you need. You're really invited to drop your predispositions, your predispositions. Maybe, you know, if you typically only hang out with that type of people, or you typically only eat that type of food, or you typically only have that kind of experience, it's like, you're here to to like experience something completely new in life completely new it, it's like a new theme <laughs> a new theme a new type of culture a new way of living a completely new vibe a completely new vibe it's like you're gonna get your groove back and it's gonna feel so good the only thing here is that you guys have to stay really open-minded about how the thing comes in how the thing comes in you know just as an example you might have somebody ask you out on a date right for those of you who are seeking like romance you might have somebody ask you out on a date and you might go oh my god i'm never gonna date that person like i'm, I'm gonna say no right or maybe you're not maybe you're maybe you're just really cool about being single and you're not looking for a relationship you but and then somebody asks you on a date and you're like ugh, like i don't want to date anybody right it's like the invitation here is to like just go for it just try it out right if you go on the date and you really find out that it wasn't aligned for you i mean then like well fine right but really be open to like exploring those invitations that come in from weird places or from weird angles um you could be asked to go out and do something that you would normally never do um it's like as long as you just ask yourself can you give this an ex can you can you do this experiment this is like experimental energy experimental energy go out there and have your experiment because you might be really surprised about where that leads you and about what you find this is like finding the pot of the gold at the end of the rainbow but the rainbow might be a really strange bizarre journey and the pot of gold might not be what you what you thought it might not be what you thought but it will be exactly what you need and in hindsight you will go wow i could not have planned this better myself thank you thank you earth for bringing me this bizarre experience and for bringing me exactly what I need in the most surprising way. So that's what I'm feeling for you guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hey, card number three, welcome to your reading. Let's see what we got here. King of Wands. Nice. Second house owning. That's, that's so cool. That's Taurus energy. The second house is ruled by Taurus. And we're talking about the Taurus Scorpio axis. The earth star chakra with grounding. More earth energy. That's more Taurus energy. We've got this tree grounding deep, deep, deep into the earth. And 
the Homesick Starseed card, Hiraith, Longing for Home, Homesick for the Stars. <laughs> okay, so here we have cosmic beings learning about the Earth game. Earning, learning about the Earth game. I was saying earning. Um, so I'm, I was staring at the second house card, owning. Um, obviously, we have like money on here, right? This is the second house is all about how you make your money. Um, it's not really about career. It's more about work. <laughs> more about work, resources, and how you earn money. Uh, you guys might be learning some difficult lessons this year about about putting in the work about putting in the work. You, you might have found your way to this reading after having some kind of, I don't really get like a tower moment out of this, but you might be in some kind of, you know, tight spot in terms of your finances or in terms of your job or just in terms of your resources, right? And you might be going like, why, why, why? With this homesick card, you know, this is this is the homesick starseed card. You guys are sitting here going like, why does things like, why does Earth have to be like this? Why? Why? I shouldn't have to pay rent. I shouldn't have to pay for anything. Everything should just be flowing and free because, you know, that's how it was. It, it, that's how it is in the higher realms and that how it, that's how it is on my home planet or whatever, right? You guys remember, remember existence where you didn't have to work for a living, where no one had to work for a living, where, you know, having everything that you need and desire was your birthright, right? You remember this and you know this in your soul. So you guys, this is like Andromeda energy. <laughs> some of you, some of you might resonate with an, like as an Andromedan star seed. Um, <laughs> and, or Lyran too, just to throw two out there. It's not, not really important, but those just came to mind. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking at this King of Wands. Um, you guys are frustrated with the status quo, frustrated with the state of affairs on Earth. And if you have found yourself in a situation where you have to work for a living, um, I can feel you wanting to break out of that, wanting to really like rage against that, like rage against the machine. Um, but... Uh, there is something for you to learn about, like from this situation. You've been, you put yourself on earth, you put yourself into this particular situation, whatever's going on with you, to, there's something you can learn about work, like literally working. Um, and this could be, you know, going to your job every day, having to dealing with an authority figure, like a boss you don't like, having to work as a team, if maybe you don't wanna work on a team, maybe for some of you it's having to work alone, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, you're having to put in the work and you don't like it, but that is a lesson for you to learn. There's something for you to learn here. And for some of you, this could be like, I can, I just keep seeing somebody like digging a hole, <laughs> digging a hole, like literally digging a hole in the ground with a shovel. Like you're just digging dirt and you feel like this is so pointless. I can't believe I have to do this. This is ridiculous. Why did I ever come to earth? I can't fucking stand this shit. This is retarded. Like that's what you guys, you guys are really frustrated with this like second house vibe. Um, Man, if somebody's having like Saturn transit through their second house, <laughs> you're learning lessons about hard work, right? Learning lessons about hard work. And what do you, what do you, why, why are you learning about hard work? Maybe like are, some of you might be Scorpios or something because Scorpio just wants to be given things, right? Scorpio just wants to receive. And I mean, Taurus wants to receive luxury, yes, but Taurus doesn't mind like doing the work, right? Because Taurus is just kind of a workhorse. So you're learning these difficult lessons about having to do the work and it's to get you grounded. It's to get you grounded. Work is grounding. Work is literally grounding. In some way, shape or form, the work that you're having to do or the money issues that you are having is to teach you about 
like the social ecosystem on earth. You were learning about the social ecosystem on earth. So it might help you to consider yourself a scientist who is studying, <laughs> who is studying this like an economist or a sociologist or something. You were studying this, you were learning about it. And if some of you are doing like physical hard labor, that's to put you in your bodies. And physical hard labor could, could include, you know, standing at a cash register all day, right? That is physical hard labor. It could also be, you know, digging ditches, whatever it is that you're having to do that is hard physical labor um, or emotionally taxing in working with people. Um, it's to put you in your body, to put you in your body. And maybe sometimes you feel like it is extinguishing your flame because you have this king of swords, that's you. You, you, you want to be the king of swords. You want to be sovereign. You want to be like self-employed. You guys ultimately, many of you will be self-employed. Um, but uh, I don't, let's get more cards. Let's get more cards. If you're, for, if you are already self-employed and you're feeling like your business is like not taking off the way you want it to, it's because there's something you need to learn about hard work first. Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands, that is like literally, can you see like the King of Wands and the Ace of Wands? The King of Wands is holding the Ace of Wands. The power is in your hand, but I, I just keep feeling like I want to say, but, 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 but. This is definitely a year of learning. Okay. <laughs> a year of learning because the Knight of Pentacles, this is a long journey. You might be frustrated with the slowness, with the tedium of this journey. It's going to take a while. So you're also learning lessons about divine timing. And really, this is almost like about earth time. Like you're learning about earth time. Something has to click into place first. You need to learn some lessons first, but also something needs to build slowly over time. You are learning the importance of having strong foundations, strong foundations. Um, it's like you, you guys feel deep down inside that you have the power of instant manifestation and then you get frustrated when things aren't manifesting. You're like, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. It's that you are building foundations and in order to build your foundations you need to be immensely grounded into your body and into the earth um you know this this fire energy doesn't want to doesn't want to ground doesn't want to connect to the earth you want to go 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 you want to do 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 you want right now right um but you're, you're you're learning lessons about having to slow down and do things at an ox's pace an ox's pace and this is like killing you, right? Eight of Swords, feeling surrounded by limitations. So with the Eight of Swords, though, the limitations is always in your own mind. So interesting, interesting. There is... Your external circumstances, the ones that are making you work or the ones that are giving you money problems or the ones that are keeping you slow, the ones that are slowing you down, somehow that is a physical reflection of your inner limitations, your inner limitations. They're, your inner limitations are manifesting externally so that you can look at them. So that you can look at them. Maybe because maybe you guys are very fiery in energy and maybe you don't. Because your fire is so bright, sometimes you have trouble um, perceiving your own inner structure because you're so bright. So it's hard to see your inner structure because looking inwards is almost blinding because your, your inner world is so, your inner flame is so bright that looking inwards is almost blinding. So that is why you cast these shadows around you so that you can see yourself reflected back to you. So what is your environment trying to teach you about your limitations? <laughs> Seven of Swords. The, okay, there, here it comes. Here it comes. 
You have not succeeded yet because you are trying to do it somebody else's way. And now you're like, what? No, I'm not. I'm doing it my way. I'm trying to do it my way. I'm always trying to do it my way, right? But there is a deeper level of authenticity that you have yet to even notice about yourself. Some of you, maybe you clicked on this and I started talking about star seeds and you were like, what's a star seed? Or I don't resonate with star seed stuff at all. <laughs> maybe you're, it's time for you to have your star seed awakening and wake up to that. Others of you, you got to get like brutally, brutally honest with yourself. Brutally honest. This, this is again like smacking of Saturn to me, like Saturn return, some of you. Maybe for some of you, you've been working like... How, what's, what's a good example? Okay, maybe you have, if somebody has, just imagine somebody who has a small business and they're wondering like, why hasn't my business taken off yet, right? Why aren't I getting the results I want? It's because you're, you're, you're not following your authenticity. With the Seven of Swords, there's always this inner authenticity that needs to be birthed. I don't see this, the Seven of Swords, by the way, as like a deceit card at all. I, I, I see it as like a self-deception, but the de deception isn't even really the word. It's like, an inner truth, an inner authenticity, your inner self, a deeper layer of your own inner truth needs to come forth, needs to come forth. It's hidden from you. You haven't seen it. So you might, you might think you know what you want, but that what you think you want is actually somebody else's want, right? It, 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 or it's like the old you wanted that, but now that's not aligned with who you really are, or you're following social conditioning. And you guys are probably really not very like, you're fringe people, right? You're not really thinking of yourself as being socially conditioned, but there is some kind of deeper layer of social conditioning that you haven't even noticed. So you guys need to go like radically authentic, radically authentic and admit something that you want that you've never really admitted to yourself. You're, it's like you guys are playing too small. You got to go bigger if you want to bust out. Like, so it's like you're being forced to do this hard work, to do this physical labor, to have these money problems because... It's like the universe is going to be squeezing you until you blast out of your own limitations. And so to try and get back to that example, say somebody has a small business and they can't figure out why their small business isn't taking off, isn't succeeding the way they want to. It is because maybe you have, that person has been reading up on Google, like how to run a business, right? And then you've been doing, you've been doing all the work, you've been doing the steps, you've been following somebody else's steps, you've been, you know, playing by the rules, you've been, okay, like I took business one-on-one and now I did this, this and that. That's what you got to toss out. Toss out the rule book, toss out the handbook, stop asking other people how to do things, stop following other people's rules. Um, and as much as you guys aren't really rule followers, there is some rule structure in your life, some habit, some way of doing things. <clears throat> wow, my throat just got insanely, wow. I almost felt like I couldn't breathe for a second there. Whoa, so weird. <sighs> okay, so throat chakra, <laughs> guys, <laughs> this is like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you need to get in touch with who you truly are what you truly want and how you want to go about doing things. No, no more doing things by the book ever. You might, cause you might think that, oh, I want a business. Therefore I should, I should learn how to run a business from people who have a successful business, but it doesn't matter if their business is successful. It, it, that's not like, that's not going to be successful for you. Okay. My throat is like, seriously, <clears throat> like freaking out. I need to go get a drink. I'll be right back. Okay. Hopefully I can keep talking through this because I can really feel how this is, is, how intense this is for you guys. It's like you're being choked. It's like you're being choked. I always actually see the Seven of Swords as a throat chakra card, right? Same with the Eight of Swords, really, because this is like, you need to let out your inner authenticity. You need to. That's what these, that's what this whole thing is about for you, this whole initiation. Who are you really? What do you really want? And it's like, yeah, you know, if you watch my channel, you've heard me talk about before of like, never think about the outcome, never think about the outcome, just follow your own inspired action, just follow your own intuition. So whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever it is that you want to do, you need to just like, stop thinking about the outcome, stop thinking about the rules, stop thinking about how other people do things, you just sit there, 
You sit there in your own power. You sit there in your own inner truth. First, you admit what you want. Then you remember who you are. And then you go, okay, okay, universe, show me the way. What is my next step? What do I do right now? What do I do right now? And it could be like, you know, if you have a business, you could see a completely different way of doing the business. And you might think that's crazy. That's crazy. For some of you, it might be like charge more for your services or for your product. Charge more, right? No thinking about it. Don't think about it. Follow your guidance. Others of you, you might be like, okay, what, what do you truly want to do? It might be like starting a singing career, right? Go to an open mic night. Do that. Do it. Follow it. You might think, ah, oh, like that's insane. I can't do that. No, like no, no more thinking about the outcome. You only follow your inspired action. You only follow your authenticity. You only follow your intuition ever. No more thinking about outcomes. Um, if you keep trying to run your small business by thinking about outcomes or thinking about, okay, I want to make, you know, this much money this month, therefore I need to run this kind of advertising and th therefore I need to go to that small business event and blah, 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 blah. No, like throw out the small business handbook. Only follow your inner guidance. And your inner guidance might tell you to do things that seem crazy, but <laughs> do that and you will be amazed where it will lead. And I keep coming back to this like grounding card, right? This grounding card. I'm just like feeling into how your throat chakra is connected to your earth star chakra. Because you've also got this longing card. You guys are considerably out of your bodies. And that is definitely like that definitely needs to be changed. Wow, I didn't mean to put them that way. But now, <laughs> wow, wow, that is so symbolic. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't paying attention to what cards I was putting where I meant to put them back where they were before. But see how before the longing was in the center position, the longing for the stars was in the center. And the grounding was kind of up over here as a side thing. I switched them out. I switched them out. That's what you guys need to do. You need to switch them out. Yes, you can, you know, like this homesickness and this looking, uh, like reaching up for the stars. It's not like I, 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 uh, I could easily word this really poorly. So I, I, I want to be careful with my words. It's like, yes, keep reaching for the stars, but not from a place of lack right not from a place of homesickness reach up for the stars with love because you love the stars and you love your star family and you love the cosmos and you love where you're from right but also also love where you are and also know that everything you want is here and that this is your home and it is safe to be here right and that um your throat chakra that I keep experiencing here represents your, your deepest, most authentic self and being your deepest, most authentic self in all things, in every moment, shining it out into the world, no matter what, right? No matter what. The throat chakra isn't just about speaking your truth. It is about being who you truly are in the face of anything, anything in the face of anything, okay? And you won't fully be able to like activate your throat chakra, have it completely unblocked. And your guys' throat chakra is pretty blocked because <laughs> um, I, I keep feeling this. I've never actually had this visceral of, of an experience in my body in a reading ever. This is like really intense. Um, I mean, maybe, you know, it'll be different for every, for every of you, but as a collective, you're, you're radiating like the most blocked throat chakra like ever. <laughs> so, um, so, also, as you work on your throat chakra, work on your on your earth star chakra, traveling deep down into the core of Gaia and knowing that it is safe to be here. It is safe to be here, that you chose to be here, that it is beautiful to be here, that you are part of the cycle of life and death on earth and that it is perfect and that you are safe, that you are safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe to be myself. Get incredibly grounded and then and then your true self will shine forth and then you can blast out of this cycle of slowness and hard work and then you will manifest. Then then you will be able to be the grounded king of wands, the grounded king of wands who manifests well well 
What, what am I trying to say? Your fire is not going to go out, but you need to bring your fire down to earth. You need to bring it down to earth so that you can work within the earth plane. It's like you guys have been trying to manifest from up above, from like above the earth plane, but that's not really very powerful, right? You need to get down into the earth plane, truly into your body, truly into the earth plane. And some of you, I can feel you going like, I am grounded. I'm very connected to the earth plane. Um, Okay, so yes, but there is so much more to be experienced there because like I said, the, the earth plane itself is shifting, right? The earth plane itself is evolving and shifting. So you need to, there's a new experience of groundedness, a new experience of being connected to the earth. And this isn't something that you just experience in your mind or even in your emotions. This is, this is something for you to experience in your body, like viscerally, viscerally experiencing the oneness of nature in your body. In your body, not just in your mind, in your body. And that is when things will unlock for you. That is when like your business will take off or that is when your money situation will improve or that is when, you know, you won't feel so slow and held back and frustrated. That's when you will blast out of this. When you are your true, most authentic self in your grounded body and simultaneously Geometri geometrically and physically connected to the earth plane, to all of nature. Just imagine what it's like to be a wild animal, right? Running, running in the forest with the dirt under your toes. You know, even to be a predator animal, making a kill. <sighs> Eating your meal, right? <laughs> Feeling the blood and the gore and the dirt, all of it being part of the cycle of life and death, life and death and life, the cycle of life and death and life, beautiful, feeling it, living it, embodying it. Some of you are remembering other planets where the life cycle was drastically different, okay? Some of you are remembering planets where the life cycle was drastically different and there is like a bitterness and a sorrow about that because you go, you, you look at certain things about the, the, the cycle of life and death on earth and it feels wrong to you. It feels wrong. Which means that there is a gap of understanding between you and Gaia. You and Gaia are not on the same page. You're not on the same page. And that's okay. She understands. She understands that. Um, but she's inviting you to understand her cycles. Her. Her cycles. She is your earth mother and she wants to show you. She wants to show you the beauty of her world. She wants to show you the beauty of her cycle of life and death and life. Right? She wants you to understand why the earth is the way it is. She wants you to, she wants to show you and she wants to show you and have you experience why it is beautiful. Um, but since you have resistance to this, you're only experiencing it now kind of through this like, unpleasant kind of hard work kind of lack mentality kind of thing so surrender to the life cycle of earth right and ask ground down into the core of earth and ask Gaia to show you why earth is perfect and beautiful exactly as she is and that is when you will experience <sighs> So much liberation and that is when you will reclaim your ability to manifest as you as you remember you should be able to manifest you know you should be able to manifest but your key to manifestation is going down into the core of the earth and understanding the cycle of life on earth so that is my message for you guys sending you so much love and light bye Hey, card number four, welcome to your reading. 
Let's see what we got here. <gasps> Ten of Cups. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Love to see that. That is harmony, perfect happiness, overflow of love, being in a perfect place of just, I'm making circles with my hand, right? Because that is the flow of love. And what is the flow of love? But it's the cycle of life, the cycle of life and death and life on earth. You are in it. You are in this star ancestors, hidden secrets, lost wisdom. Look a little deeper. You guys are going to be uncovering something, uncovering something through the cycle of these eclipses. Inner strength. Solar plexus chakra activation. And <laughs> black moon Lilith mystery. Mystery. So interesting. I, before I talk about these, I actually want a few more cards. <sighs> okay, I just picked up a deck and fell onto the floor. It was the Three of Swords. Which is obviously not everyone's favorite card because it represents heartbreak, but heartbreak that brings heart healing. Three of Wands, Vision. Nine of Dicks, di Discs <laughs> Culmination. <laughs> Nine of Pentacles. And Ten of Wands, Burden. You guys, this is very complex. Bottom of the deck, Ten of Discs, Establishment. And another one fell out. Um, I don't even know where it went. Okay, the moon. Okay, that actually clicks. I got we got the moon right here next to Black Moon Lilith. Um <sighs> something yeah, the, you guys are really going through something like this whole year. Oh my God. Okay, so it's like... Something is happening to you guys. Something is happening with your life. And... You might not like it. <laughs> and you... But... It, it is absolutely here to serve you. Absolutely, absolutely here to serve you. You just won't understand it right now. Um, like I could give this reading a really positive spin and you know, I could probably trigger a few of you because you'd be like, no, no, that is, that is not what's happening to me. Whatever is happening to me is not good, but you can't see the, fo see the forest through the trees right now, right? You can't see this for the beautiful, benevolent gift that it is. I don't know examples are coming to mind because this is going to be so different for everybody, but I just heard the word rupture. What is rupturing? I have my hand on this black moon Lilith. So I'm just trying to catch the vibe. Something going on with experiencing like, how do I explain? I could say dark or shadow aspects of the divine feminine because we have black moon Lilith, but I don't really mean it that way. I, I mean it in terms of the mysteries of the night, the mysteries of the night. You know, think of ancient priestesses dancing around the ceremonial fire in the forest. 
there's an owl calling in the background. You hear rumbling. Is it a bear, right? But feeling... Delving into the darker mysteries. Mysteries, dar darkness not, not in not in any negative way. Maybe that is the root of what's happening here. Um, there is something, some mystery is unfolding for you and you might initially feel threatened by it. You might feel like it is threatening or damaging or dark or taboo to you, but you're being invited to explore the darkness, to explore the taboo, to walk out into the night and to embrace the night embrace the night and know that in the darkness of the void you only find what you bring with you okay in terms of nothing in the void can harm you unless you bring a weapon with you if you bring fears with you you will find fear if you, if you bring anxiety with you, you will find anxiety. If you bring a weapon with you or thoughts of violence, then you will find weapons against you and you will find violence. Um, so, but if you move in, if you explore the night, if you walk into the night with love and an open heart, then you will find nothing but magic and mystery and love and the beauty of the night. So... The, um, what you might, what you are releasing at this time is the, like, you know, you've got a heart chakra clearing going on over here with this three of swords. So this is blocks to your heart chakra are being released in a way that might feel extremely painful to you. Um, But they are to clear you. They are to clear you of those things that would not serve you in the night. They would not serve you. You know, so those fears and anxieties and weapons and impulses that would not serve you, they're being cleansed from you now. This includes, for some of you, like a victim mentality and your personal power is being restored to you. But for your personal power to be restored to you, you might need to be cracked open first. It really strikes me that this personal power, this solar plexus card, this person has cracks, right? They're, it's like their stone shell. Their stone shell is cracking around them and the real you, the, your inner power is coming forth coming forth but the protection that you've put around yourself needs to come down around you first needs to come down around you <sighs> nothing it is, is as it seems especially things that seem negative everything is happening to serve you <sighs> hidden secrets lost wisdom look a little deeper right look a little deeper especially with this moon card. You are on a sacred spiritual journey to recover some of your soul gifts that you have blocked yourself from in past lives. Past lives where you were one with the night, when you were a priestess, a medicine woman, a witch, a shaman, a magician, anything, any of those archetypes, right? Or the list goes on. Some kind of sacred scribe um, comes to mind as well. Um, you have, because of persecution in your past life, in your past lives, you took on a persecution complex. You took on this victim mentality. You took it on so that you could learn to fear your own power. And so that you would learn to fear the night. Now you fear power. Now you fear the nighttime. You did this to put this restraint on yourself so that when you liberated yourself, you would know how not to abuse your power. 
So you're coming out of a long, dark night. <sighs> Strikes me that we have 3-3, three, 33. Three, three. <laughs> three of Wands is this vision, okay? Vision. <sighs> what are you envisioning? What do you see? I'm really feeling my third eye throb. Some of you don't trust that your visions are true and real. Um, there's also an invitation here to see past your own distortions. The distortions are coming from your own fears Sometimes when you receive messages from the universe or when you receive psychic insight, when you use your intuition, the message that you receive is true and pure, but your subconscious fears and traumas skew the message so that it goes negative. The message skews negative. So you might actually receive a beautiful message from the universe and then all of this, like, all of these, this malware running in your consciousness that was because of past life trauma and persecution, it makes everything seem negative. It makes things seem scary. You know, um, I don't know what, a, what an example would be. Like, be very, very, very careful about the narratives that you attach to the messages that you receive or to your psychic insights, right? You might... Um, like see something in a vision or in a dream or just, you know, in your mind's eye, you might see something and immediately attach a bunch of fear-based negative thoughts around it. Or you might hear something on the news even and immediately attach all of these negative fear-based narratives to it. You might think about a certain group of people on the planet and immediately attach a bunch of fear-based narratives to it. Um, you might receive communication from a spiritual being and misinterpret their intentions. Um, you might feel under attack. You might feel under a psychic attack sometimes. Nothing is as it seems. Nothing is as it seems. There is a much, much deeper truth. This is a deeply, deeply spiritual journey that will change the rest of your life. It's going to release you from these narratives of fear and liberate you from your fear of the dark, from your fear of your own shadow. It's going to like show you that the magic of the night is beautiful and pure and it's going to allow you to feel comfortable traveling out into the void, traveling out into complete darkness even when you can't see anything. This is all happening for your highest good. Ten of Cups, this is, <laughs> I feel like some of you, you know, might have almost clicked off the video when you saw the Ten of Cups, right? Um, this is so... <sighs> Ah, oh, the message is this. this is so happening for you. This is all happening to serve you. No matter w what is happening around you, you know, if you feel like you are in fear, if you feel like you are in persecution or in victimhood, or if you're in lack, um, if, you, if you're having anxiety, if you're just overwhelmed with emotions, if you are just confused about how to move forward, I don't know, whatever you are feeling, right? This is, is, is happening to, restore, to uh, restore you. It's happening to restore you happening to restore you. Um, this fear, this fear of the darkness is a burden that it, it needs to be put down. Your fears, it's time for your fears to be put down. It's like, uh, like for some of you, it's like a fear of the occult, right? A, a fear of things scorpionic, maybe a fear of Scorpio energy itself. Maybe you guys have a really difficult time with Scorpio transits, like Scorpio season or the Scorpio full moon. Maybe you have a really difficult time with that. Maybe you can't understand Scorpio energy. Um, but it's like you totally can, but you've been 
traumatized about it. You, you feel like scorpionic things are negative. Um, uh, for, for some of you, this is like rooted in sexual trauma, which I won't really go into. I'll just raise that for you to feel into if that's, you know, relevant for you. Um, you know, for, for that to be healed. Some of you, you know, if, if that, if I said that and that really choked you up and, and you're going, I don't have any sexual trauma in this life. Well, it's like you do in another life, right? You, you can have it coming through from another life. Um, that will be come up for you to work through. For some of you, there's an invitation to be open to like new experiences in the bedroom. Things that you never thought you'd be open to or that you'd never thought you would want to try. It's like get really honest with yourself about what you want, about what feels good to you or what you would want to explore. And and trying something once doesn't mean you need to do it again, but it's like um I think I think like the bedroom metaphor is just you know, for some of you it's something else, but explore the themes of Scorpio energy in a way that you haven't before. Explore them. Is it like practicing magic? Is it doing spellcraft? Is it trying something out in the bedroom, right? Is it delving into some kind of cosmic mystery? Um, like researching some kind of mystery school. And if you feel drawn to any particular kind of mystery school, um, like spiritual tradition, sp like specific spiritual tradition, um, or just like a history of some kind of area on earth is because you're reclaiming some of your soul gifts and knowledge from lifetimes and, and that area on earth. And even if it seems something like dark to you, don't be afraid of things that are dark. Don't be afraid of things that are dark. Some of you, okay, some of you have like religious trauma as well. Um, you know, for example, if you were raised Christian and now you have a horrible fear of demons, um, stuff like that, right? This all needs to be worked through and you might be going, how do I work through it? Well, don't worry about that because these eclipses are, they're moving you through it. All you have to do is keep breathing and keep being, just be willing to explore, be willing to explore new things. Um, and you can just do the exploration. You can do it on a mental level if that's where it's safe for you, right? Um, you know, if there's some kind of like something you're interested in, something dark about the human psyche. Um, like if you want to, you know how I know a lot, like a lot of people go on this weird kick where suddenly they're really interested in learning about serial killers, right? If for some reason that seems to draw you in, just, just follow that because learning about the dark aspects of, you know, some people's human psyche, um, it's like there's something for you to learn there, something for you to experience. Um, if there's any type of like cult or something or cult activity or some kind of like group that pla practices some kind of dark magic, like black magic, if you want to read about that to gain understanding of like what it is they were doing and why they were doing it and, and then uh, and then maybe you might be like, well, how could anyone do that? Why would anyone do that? It's like, you can't understand. Ask for the understanding to come to you. You might need to explore it a little bit, right? You might need to explore it a little bit to come into understanding. And with understanding comes healing. With understanding comes healing. That's why I'm talking about all this. With understanding comes healing. <sighs> Now, you know, I'm just looking at, we got the nine of pentacles, the 10 of pentacles and the 10 of cups. There is so much for you to receive. There is so much. Oh my goodness. Okay. I, I, I get, I get something else about this now. Um, you know, Scorpio energy is about receiving. Um, and so if you've been in lack, if you haven't been receiving love, if you haven't been receiving abundance, and we have both represented here, right? Nine and 10 of pentacles is personal abundance and communal abundance. And 10 of cups is like perfect ultimate happiness and, and flowing of love of community and of self and of romant romantic love. It's like all cosmic love in the 10 of cups. It's all the love, right? If you haven't been receiving love and abundance as you would wish, it's because, um, of this comp like compromised relationship you have with Scorpio energy itself. You you can't receive if your Scorpio energy is compromised because, you know, eighth house Scorpio, this all represents 
like receiving and digesting things that are given to you from others. So you've been cutting yourself off, uh, like your, your past life trauma and your, you know, or, or trauma from this life has been cutting you off from everything, from everything. This is like, this is really intense reading because you guys are like really going through the ringer of releasing trauma. And I know it might seem like you are being more traumatized. Like if this year feels more traumatic, it, it, it's, 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 it's not the, the purpose, like, you know, your higher self is not leading you through more trauma. It might just feel like more trauma is happening to you because you're releasing the past trauma. As it comes up, it needs to be released, and which, which means you experience it one more time, but you're, you're, you're healing, you are releasing trauma. You are not taking on more trauma. That, that doesn't happen anymore. All we do now, from here on out is we release trauma which means sometimes having to re-experience it in order to heal it um I had I had some experiences that myself where um I had to relive some extremely trauma traumatic experiences in my dreams um and these were traumas from other lives and I really relived them in in astral experiences and yeah it like really threw me for a loop for a whole month but I had to see relive it and re-experience it in order to move on from it and that's what you guys are doing. Your personal power is being restored and then your abundance and your ability to receive love will be restored once you let down these burdens and this, these burdens that are like rooted in your fear of the dark. Maybe you feel like some of you have often felt that the dark is more powerful than you, that a predator on some level is more powerful than you. So this is restoring to you your light, right? Your, your solar plexus lights up that is your that is the inner light your solar plexus is your portal to source well i mean one of your portals to source right it is the light of source shining inside of your solar plexus you are the light you will be remembering that you are the light and as the light you are more powerful than anything than anything no darkness can no darkness that you feel might harm you no darkness no darkness can stand in the sight of your light some, some but since you've been through trauma you have you have you know taught yourself because you chose to take on those traumas for you know, your soul experiences and you, you got into this met like skewed way of thinking where the, you taught yourself that the darkness was more powerful than you. And so sometimes maybe you still feel like a, like a small child surrounded by, you know, the things that go bump in the night and you still feel like the darkness is more powerful than you, but it's not, it's not. All of these experiences will be returning your personal power to you so that you know, so that you feel, so that you live in every moment that you know you are this bright, bright, glowing ball of light and that no shadow can can come at you. No, nothing can come at you. You are the light. You are the light. The way is clear. Awaken to the power within you. Look at you. You are the light. You are this entire galaxy, right? You are the light. Nothing can stop you now. The way is clear. Nothing is, there is nothing around you that can truly hurt you. The way is clear and the power to move forward is within you. That's three, 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 guys, three, three, three. And we got card 32. All is at your fingertips. What has been created by one can be had by all. No more feeling small. No more feeling like, you know, you look at social media, you look around and you see other people and you go, oh, it'd be nice if I could do what they do. It'd be nice if I could be successful like they're successful or be, oh, it'd be nice if I could have fun like they have, right? No, whatever you want, you can have. There's nothing stopping you. The way is clear. You just need to allow yourself to want it. You guys have stopped wanting things. Some of you have stopped wanting things because... Some of you have stopped wanting things because you learned that there's no point in wanting things. Others of you want things so bad, but you just have this horrible sense of frustration that it will never come like to fruition. So once you release this trauma and once you go through this healing, you will, you will, your personal power will be restored and then you will realize suddenly, suddenly you can do Suddenly you can do what you want. Suddenly you can be who you want to be. Suddenly you can go out there and create the life that you always wanted because you will no longer be held down by all of this trauma. You have a sensitive antenna. Sensitive people collect the emotions of others. So yeah, you, you know, beautiful, big hearted empaths. Uh, for some of you, this is like, 
holding on to the trauma of the entirety of the earth. You know, you guys look out into the world and you see everything that's happening and you go, like, I can't live like with this. You know, you feel the pain of the entirety of the earth. You don't need to feel persecuted by the pain of the entirety of the earth because it is not as it seems, right? Look a little deeper. Look a little deeper. Ask Mother Gaia to show you her perspective. And her perspective is, uh, is not one of is not one of unending pain. I feel like some of you might view Gaia as humanity's helpless victim. Um, if you view Gaia as humanity's helpless victim, or if you view humanity as a helpless victim, that's because maybe, you know, at points in your past, or maybe even right now, you have been a helpless victim. So that, that like feeling of being the helpless victim, that is a vibration inside of you, and since it's inside of you, then you see it outside of yourself, right? You're seeing it resonating outside of yourself and you tend to understand things. You tell stories of helplessness. You tell stories of helplessness and you tell stories of, um, you know, victim perpetrator, right? So as you heal from your own victimization and as you come into your own personal power, you will understand that... The earth itself is not the helpless victim. Humanity itself is not a helpless victim. You will, as you empower you, yourself, you will come into an understanding and you will experience how earth, how humanity, how empowered Gaia truly is. How Gaia is this beautiful, sovereign, cosmic being. And how, you know, you know, if you struggle with like the things that humanity has done and is continuing to do to the earth. And it's like, talk, talk to Gaia, ask her to really bring you into a deep understanding about this. You know, what she communicates to me, like the messages I tend to get about this is that, you know, you know, she forgives us, right? She forgives us. She is our mother and she understands why we are the way we are. She understands the entire cycle of how, how we got to be how we are and she understands why we do the things we do and she understands where we are going and she's like you know all is not lost all is not lost she's like this can all be healed this can all be fixed we are all growing together nothing is lost nothing is lost the healing is coming the healing is here the healing is here and more healing is to come right she <laughs> She, she, she is not our helpless victim, right? She understands us intimately. We, we are part of her, right? We are part of her. So, yeah. <laughs> Some of you even have trauma from, like, having lived on a planet that died, right? That, that was either, like, got exploded or got destroyed or just became so toxic that it became nearly uninhabitable, stuff like that. Um, like this, there's so many different things here, so many different traumas that are coming up it, and it's all about the cycle of life and death and the paths you have, the dark paths you have watched to explore the extremes of life and death. But coming out of that, guys, coming out of that, just keep breathing, keep walking your path keep tuning into Gaia, keep asking her to show you the way, ask her to show you the way, ask her to bring you healing, ask her to bring you understanding for you guys, like a deeper understanding of the cycle of life and death and a deeper understanding of who Gaia truly is, how she truly operates. Um, the bigger picture of the changes of like the shifts that earth is going through energetically, physically, right? Knowing that everything is part of a bigger picture. There's these, these eclipses are bringing you like everything, everything that's happening on this Taurus Scorpio axis is bringing you through a deeper understanding of why it's all happening, why it's playing out the way it is. And like,
how this is all happening to serve you and to restore your personal power to you and to humanity and to the earth. But Gaia has never lost her personal power. She has always been empowered. <laughs> but you will, you will come to understand her own empowerment. As you understand your own empowerment, as you empower yourself, you start to see the empowerment in others. <sighs> okay, guys, those are your messages. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hey, card number four, welcome to your reading. I mean, this is number five. Number five. I typically only do four, but this reading has five. So number five, we got... Saturn with the truth, big daddy Saturn coming out, heart, inner child, child, heart chakra with the inner child, portal, your portal moment to move through this all and the three of swords, you're moving through your heart break, two, two heart cards, okay, the three of swords is heartbreak, yes, but it's heartbreak that breaks your heart open to remove the baggage and blockage that has been like stuck in your heart chakra and you're coming into this place of healing and your healing is going to be involving deep levels of forgiveness, deep levels of forgiveness. Um, I feel like you guys as old souls, even when you were a child, you weren't really that much like a child because you, you had so many... Um, imprints left from your previous lives um so a lot of these imprints from previous lives are going to be falling away so that you can have this new experience of this open heart and your open heart is going to be a portal for you going to be a portal for you you'll be portaling through from your heart center from your heart center so as you experience this year and these eclipses I would expect, I mean, you guys to be doing some crying, but the kind of crying that's very healing, the kind of crying that when something comes up, you need to purge it and let it go and let it flow. And then you will find that your heart is portaling you through to what? What is your heart portaling you through to? It's portaling you through to truth, to truth. What is true for you? What is true for you? With Saturn coming up, this might not be very fun. <laughs> so you are invited to really explore your Saturnian aspects or your Capricorn energy. Even if you don't have any of that in your chart, you, you still have some, right? <laughs> because Saturn is still there, out there. You can still tune into Saturn and Capricorn. There's a little bit of... Like, healing from self-sacrifice here. Self-sacrifice. Because, I mean, we had this Three of Swords come up in a couple of other readings as well. There's been a lot of heart healing going on, which, you know, makes sense <laughs> given this these eclipses on the Taurus-Scorpio axis. But for Saturn to come out here, that always tells me that there has been... You need to heal from your own self-sacrifices. Having given too much to others, having, having dimmed your own light, having allowed yourself to be used... And it's almost like you need to forgive yourself. <sighs> Strange. Some of you might have made some decisions or had some behaviors as a child that like really, really, really determined your like life's path. If that's the case, you know, you need to let it go. Saturn makes you let it go. Let it go. Saturn will drag you kicking and screaming through the mud until you let it go. Um, the 
interesting, interesting. I'm so interested that Saturn is here because you have Taurus energy, which is Earth, like the first Earth sign and Capricorn ruled by Taurus, I'm mean, sorry, ruled by Saturn is the most mature Earth energy in the Zodiac. And neither Taurus nor Capricorn like to let go of things. But I would say that Capricorn with Saturn's influence can, <laughs> Capricorn and Saturn don't like to let go of things, but once Capricorn does let go of things, I know this because I'm like a five pl um, placement Capricorn stellium. Once Capricorn decides to let go of something, Capricorn like rapidly divests of everything. It's like Capricorn and Saturn, with Saturn's guidance, you can do anything with gusto. You can do anything to excess. You can do anything seriously. So it's like if Taurus, Taurus itself, the Taurus energy, I feel like you guys, are, this is more tuning you into like healing something that has been going on for way too long, way too long. Um, your Taurus energy, your earth energy need has been carrying something for, for fucking ever and it won't let go of it. There's something inside of you, feel inside. What What is inside of you that just won't let go, won't let go ever? That's the thing that needs to let go. That's the thing that needs to let go. And perhaps the only thing that will get you to let go is Saturn. <laughs> um, so this is Saturn's like, area of expertise making you let go. It's interesting because how, you, how, how would you make Taurus energy let go of something? Perhaps the only thing that can guide Taurus energy through letting go of something, the only thing that can get Taurus energy to connect with Scorpio energy on the other side of its axis, Interestingly, Capricorn energy is coming through, Saturn energy is coming through as the thing that teaches Taurus to let go. Saturn is here to teach you to let go. Okay, I could keep saying that forever. It's just there's a very interesting dynamic here. Um, very, very interesting. Like, this interests me very personally because I'm the Capricorn. My husband's a Taurus and my husband never lets go of anything and I'm constantly trying to teach him to let go of things. And my stepson is a Scorpio. So it's like, in my own personal family dynamic, this is like Capricorn, Taurus, and Scorpio. And it's, it's, it's here. It's all here in this reading. It's so interesting. But I don't know how that would be relevant for, like, all of you. <laughs> but it's definitely here. Um, okay, I want more cards, though. What's all, what else is going on here? But it's just like, the situation of your life right now, the situation that you, you are in, is here to make you let go of something so that you can move through your portal. This portal represents the Scorpio energy, because what is Scorpio if not a portal to something unseen? You're being asked to make the leap into the unknown. Make the leap into the unknown. But you can't go through the portal if you're still carrying whatever you've been carrying, right? Only you go through the portal. You can't take a backpack through the portal. It'll be vaporized or it won't. the portal won't even work for you, right? Nothing can go with you except like you, you have to be naked, okay? You have to be naked as you move through this portal. The lovers just flew right out so interesting because I was just talking about how this is like a, this could almost be like a personal reading for like my household right between me and my husband and they're holding a like cat and a dog this is this is weird okay so <laughs> there's a polarity at play for you guys I mean there's a polarity at play for everybody because we are talking about the Taurus Scorpio axis which is a polarity that is being unified um Okay, so you guys are working very, very deeply on a personal, intimate level with this like year long, more than year long eclipse narrative. Okay, you guys are like somehow, some way, I don't know if you are personally involved with Taurus, Scorpio, or Capricorn energy or something. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Just tossing that out there if that, you know, resonates with somebody. But somehow you are like stepping up. Like there, there is like apparently a group of people who are stepping up to really do some of the very, very heavy lifting for this eclipse season. You are working very personally with these energies. It's like, it's mirroring what is happening with the, with earth energy itself. Okay. If you listen to my blurb at the beginning, 
Um, I talked about how uh, I had this personal experience where I felt that these eclipses on the Taurus Scorpio axis are helping us, helping the Earth energy itself shift. Like, I'm talking like 2D Earth consciousness, nature itself, the animals, the plants, Mother Gaia, everything is shifting. Um, like, how do I explain? Like, it, it's part of the ascension, yes, but it's also about that. I remember I, if you saw, I was trying to describe how physical embodied Earth consciousness and spiritual non-physical cosmic consciousness are coming together to create a union and when they come into union it changes everything it changes earth energy it changes the, the nature of the earth it changes the 3d structure of reality entirely and it changes the spirituality it changes cosmic consciousness it changes everything everything is changed when earth and spirit come into unity so you guys are playing this out in your personal life. This is part of your mission. This is part of your life work. Um, this is by far, this is the fifth reading, um, and it is by far the most it, like spiritually intense and cosmic and big picture reading. The other ones were largely about people working through their, you know, personal journeys. This is, for you guys, this is like way bigger. It goes way beyond that. It's like giving me chill, chills and shivers and like my voice is getting weird because you guys are playing out something big. You might not, I mean, ah, so this eclipse season, this whole year is a massive spiritual awakening for you guys, portaling you through, whoa, <laughs> flip, what just flipped out? Transformation, okay? This will be the death card in a regular tarot, which is, which represents Scorpio, but here it is not death, it is transformation. You guys are learning that you don't need to die in order to be reborn, right? It, that's the old way. <laughs> Every, ever since you came to Earth, you've had to die in order to be reborn, but you don't need to die anymore, right? That's going to be the new way as the physical reality, as Earth energy itself shifts and evolves and ascends and opens up to a whole new dimension, a whole new experience. Like I'm talking like literally the, 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 the 3D, like the 2D, the 3D, like all of the lower physical structures, they themselves, it itself is changing and shifting and opening up to a whole new level because it has merged with spiritual consciousness. It's all coming together. This is like a coming together of two lovers. It is a coming together of two beings, like with three, like earth, with like, ah, I hope you guys can understand that. Like words defy me here, right? Earth energy and spirit energy, as they come together, they are creating something new. They are both changed and they both evolve. So you guys are playing this out. It's part of your work as like a spiritual being, as a starseed, as a light worker, it is all shifting. So whatever is happening in your personal life, there's it's like so much more than you can imagine at this time, you know, um, because you're you're one of the people like running the algorithm, like solving the problem, problems that you are trying to solve in your own life, experiences that you're moving through in your own life, they are part of the equation. You you are like going to be finding one of the keys and then at the end of this like everything that you learn you you're uploading it to the universe and it, it goes in there to solve the equation you're you're gathering data so that the universe can shift this isn't even just about earth's ascension this isn't just about your ascension or earth's ascension this is about the universal shift the entire universe is shifting and changing and ascending and creating something that we've never experienced before <laughs> four of crystals so Maybe you don't want to change definitely earth energy itself, Taurus energy itself, the 3D, 2D structures of reality themselves. They don't want to change, right? They want to stay the same, but it has been the same for so long, for so many eons of time that something has to, has to be transformed, right? Something needs to break. Um, I, it's like forgive the process high priestess guys we got the lovers we got transformation we got the high priestess that's you that is you you are here to witness this shift you are here to shepherd the shift you don't really need to do anything except for work through your own life circumstances feel your feelings release your feelings when you need to and just stay connected for you guys, the challenge is both to 
you're straddling the line, okay? You're straddling the line, the lovers. You're coming in from both sides. Um, other readings had a focus on, like some of them were more focused on the Scorpio side of the of the polarity of the axis. Others were more focused on the Taurus side of the axis. And maybe some of you watched some of those readings and those are true for you too. But this is like a whole nother layer of it. You guys are straddling the line. You guys are unifying the polarity. You guys are in the middle. I actually often, I often think of, you know, as the year, the wheel of the year goes on and we move through all of these different astrological energies, I often feel it's like, you know, we're sampling this and sampling that. It's like Aquarius energy and then it's Pisces energy and then it's Aries energy and then we're, we're sampling all these different energies. We move through them all and experience them all, but it's like at the end of the day, we need to stay at the middle of it just to have our feelers going out and experiencing them and pulling back the, the what we learn from all of them and understand all of them and ultimately embody all of them, to embody all of it, to be at the center of the zodiac wheel. That's like, that's the high priestess, right? To be at the middle of it all, to understand it all. So you guys are straddling the line between Scorpio and Taurus. You guys are life and death life and death. You guys are pulling life and death together. You are harmonizing the cycle of life and death and taking the, the, the cycle of life and death itself to a new level, like inventing a new level of life and death, like, like the life and death cycle, the life cycle. You are changing the life cycle of the universe. <laughs> Changing the life cycle of the universe with your spiritual work and with your grounded work. Your work right now is going to be like an equal balance or you're struggling to come into an equal balance between the, between your spiritual life and your, and your earth life, right? How, how do you walk the line? How do you straddle the line? Well, it's, it's going to be messy sometimes, right? It's going to be really messy, um, but that's okay. You, you've been living, you've been, your entire soul's journey Everything you did to get to Earth, everything you did to lower your frequency enough to get to Earth, yeah, lower your frequency enough, five of wands, right? You've been through so much, old soul. You've been through so much. You've experienced the conflict, but right now you are holding yourself apart from the conflict. Hold yourself apart from the conflict. Um, you are so sensitive that you experience the conflict. You see it, you perceive it, you feel it. Try not to get overwhelmed by it or to get to succumb to it as much as you can. Try to hold yourself self apart from it in meditation. Usually the five of wands shows somebody like fighting the conflict, but this five of wands, since this is such a spiritual deck, it shows somebody sitting in meditation, holding themselves apart from the conflict. You are walking a higher path right now. You don't need to be embroiled in the madness of human society. Eight of wands... Uh, swords, sorry, this this card has been coming out and the bottom of the deck for this one, Ten of Swords. A massive ending. Ten of Swords coming up on the transformation. Okay, so a massive, massive ending for you guys. I don't know. It's going to be different. I don't know what is ending for you, but... It's like, it's an end to your limitations, okay? It's an end to your limitations. You might have this ending reflected to you in your physical reality some, somehow. Um, if so, the ending, the thing that is ending, the thing that is done is only to teach you, is only to help you release all of your internal limitations, release all of them. To release, uh, like, it's like to release your notions of what the cycle of life and death is on earth to release your, your your ideas of what it means to be alive and what it means to die to release all of it it is it's time to like invent something entirely new invent something entirely new and you guys might be thinking like who am i to decide this right <laughs> who, who am i to decide this shouldn't this be coming down from higher realms and it's like yes you are receiving the information from higher realms you are the high priestess it is all coming down through for you and it is coming up from the earth too and you're also also like learn from the animals learn from the plants learn from nature right learn from the earth right now learning from plants and animals is literally as valuable as like learning from an archangel okay they are like yes they are on opposite sides of the like polarity but they're like equally valuable to you they are equally beautiful equally powerful equally important um, and it's like, since you are the one here in the human body, you are the, you are the one who has had deep spiritual experiences. You are the one who has 
you know, ascended your consciousness and you are also here mastering human life, this means that it's you. Like, it's you. This is about you doing this. You do this now. This is, this is you. And <laughs> you don't, but you're like, now you're like, how do I do it? I don't know what to do. How could I possibly imagine how to <laughs> evolve the cycle of life and death, right? Of course your mind can't do that. Of course it can't. Don't even try to think about this, okay? Do not even try. I mean, well, I mean, you can. You can speculate and think and daydream you know, knock yourself out. That's fine. But like, you're, this is not about thinking about it with your mind. That's not where the solution comes from. Okay. And you're not expected. Nobody expects you to figure it out with your mind. You do this by in every moment, just opening up to the portal. First, opening up to forgiveness, right? Opening up to forgiveness, radical forgiveness. The guys, this could be like extreme radical forgiveness to be able to forgive something that you never thought you could possibly forgive. So if something is happening in your life that is challenging you to forgive, walk your path until you can find forgiveness on this. And you're, you're, you guys are like, you know, highly, highly evolved spiritual beings. Your path to forgiveness will be unique to you, but you will absolutely know how to, how to walk the path, right? You know how to walk your own path. You don't need me to tell you how to do it. Okay. Seeking truth, seeking truth. Knowing what is true so that you know what to let go of. You'll be letting go of everything that is not true to you. Because Saturn is here to tell you, to make you let go, right? Saturn is here to make you let go. And then you move through the portal, right? Uh, something's going to happen where you're going to have to walk out into the unknown. That could be physically in your human life. It could be spiritually, like having some kind of experience where it's like an ego death or it's just something unbelievable happens, right? Walking out into the unknown. So you are contributing to this evolution of the life and death cycle itself by whatever it is that you were guided to do in your daily life in every moment in your spiritual work right you all you do is exist you just be you just be yourself you just breathe and you go what is next for me show me the way and something happens something comes to you in life some kind of lesson some kind of problem some kind of opportunity, some kind of challenge, some kind of spiritual experience, whatever comes to you, you just handle it one thing at a time and you just sit in your alignment and you go, what is my way? What is the way forward? And the only thing to keep in mind here is that often your, you might find often that your intuition, that your inner guidance is taking you on a completely radical path. Challenging you to do things you never thought you would do. Challenging you to be interested in things you never thought you could be interested in. Challenging you to love to to love people, places, or things, or activities that you never thought you would love. Like taking you on the deepest journeys, down the deepest rabbit holes, into all kinds of fantastical <laughs> adventures. All transformative. All transformative. All designed to get you to straddle the straddle the the axis of life and death and to rise above it all, rise above it all. So deeply, deeply spiritual year for you guys. Um, that will be very much grounded and reflected in your physical life because you are straddling the line. Okay. You guys are like the line walkers is what I would want to say. This is the word that comes to mind. The line walkers, you're walking the line, right? You are traveling between the worlds. You were traveling between the worlds. You were using your shamanic capacities to travel between the worlds. To like stitch them together, but also to create something brand new. Brand new. This is about the entire universe shifting. <laughs> this is about an entire new way of... So, uh, whatever it is, we've never seen it before. Nobody has ever seen it more before. This universe has never seen it, seen it before. Entirely new. So all you can do is just follow your guidance. That's it. There's nothing else that will guide you on this. You can't look outside of yourself. You can't ask your mind. You just, you follow your guidance in every moment because it's your inner compass. Your inner compass is the only thing that will see you through this. But you have been, you're so ready for this. You have been preparing for this for all of your lifetimes. And you just have to bravely, <laughs> bravely follow your inner compass through the portal, through the many portals, and just go where you never even imagined anyone could go. So <sighs> thank you for being here. Thank you for your work. 
I will be seeing you guys in the quantum. And I love you. Bye.